In the heart, there are two sides, and each side has two valves. One regulating inflow, and the other one regulating the outflow. In our case, the most important part of the heart is usually the left side. And it's usually the left-sided valves that cause the most problems that we end up having to fix. The way that these valves can malfunction is they can either become blocked or jammed up or they leak. When it becomes blocked, then we will have to unblock them and if they leak, we can either repair or replace the valve to fix the leak. However, not all blocked valves or leaking valves needs to be fixed. We also have to look at the patient to see whether they have developed symptoms from the disease. We also have to see the severity of the disease and the effects on the heart. So if a patient is already symptomatic, meaning that they are suffering from the blockage and they have, for example, limitation in their ability to do normal things in life, like walking, then we would consider that the valve will need to have something done. On the other hand, if the valve is also severe, uh, and although the patient has no symptoms, but the disease is severe to the extent that it is causing the heart to enlarge or weaken, then that is also a time when we would intervene. Unfortunately, heart valve repair surgery is not for everyone. We use it mainly for the mitral valve and is mainly for leaking mitral valves. In the National Heart Centre of Singapore, about 60 to 70 percent of leaking mitral valves are repairable. In the other 30, 40 percent, we would have to replace them. If you look at the mitral valve, it consists of two leaflets or doors that are attached to these little strings, which are called cordae. And these strings, like a parachute string, will prevent these doors from flopping backwards. So if I were to show you with my hands, representing the two valve leaflets, and when they open, they open in this manner, and we attach down by the strings, and when they close, they close in this manner and still attach with the strings. However, if the strings break or loosen, what happens is that when they close, this will flop out. And then you get this gap that allows the blood to leak back. So what happens in this situation is that the valve is able to open, but is not able to close effectively. And the way that we repair this is by either replacing the strings or putting a artificial string to bring the valve back down to the same level, restoring the opening closing action of this valve. Well, to answer that question, I would want to tell you what are the problems with valve replacement surgery. If you were to use a tissue valve, it works very well compared to a human valve. However, like all living things, this has a limited lifespan and it may wear out over time, sometimes as early as 5 to 10 years. If you were to use a mechanical valve like this, this will last you for a lifetime it doesn't wear out. However, you will have to take very strong blood thinners in order to prevent the blood from clotting on this valve. And these blood thinners itself carries a risk of bleeding and clots forming, even with the best control. Hence, when we do a valve repair, we prefer to see the advantages as having a durability that is perhaps almost 
as good as a mechanical or at least better than a tissue valve but without all the risk of having to take strong blood thinners. In addition, a valve repair better preserves the heart valve function and patients who are able to have their valve repair tends to do much better than patients who have had a replacement. Heart valve repair surgery can be performed to fix a leaky heart valve. Valves that are damaged beyond repair will need to be replaced. Heart valve repair surgery, however, may not be suitable for everyone. Patients who have undergone heart valve repair surgery enjoy better heart valve function, a more durable heart valve, and avoid the risks associated with taking strong blood thinners.